Hello and welcome to this Come to Jesus Daily Devotional. I trust you are well. We continue in our Easter devotionals as we head up for Resurrection Sunday, the greatest day. And today we look at some of the events of Easter Wednesday. Today's lesson, even on the darkest days, Jesus wants us to generously pour out our worship, which is a beautiful thing and the most important thing that we do. Although Jesus' anointing probably took place on the previous Saturday night, as we read in John 12, 1 to 12, Matthew and Mark mix it in with the events of Easter Wednesday. This is because these authors were more interested in the themes than they were in the chronology. They wanted to contrast her loving devotion with that of Judas and the religious leaders who are seeking to betray and to kill Jesus. Firstly, the Passover is two days away. We read in Matthew 26, 1 to 2, when Jesus had finished saying all these things, he said to his disciples, as you know, the Passover is two days away and the Son of Man will be handed over to be crucified. Let's remember that the events of Easter were all prophesied and took place according to the plan and love of God. Jesus' life was given for us. It was not taken from him. As with the events of Passover, Jesus is presented as our Passover lamb who was given for our freedom. Secondly, we read about the scheme to arrest and kill Jesus. According to Jesus' predictions, the religious leaders schemed to arrest and to kill him. We read in Matthew 26, 3 to 5. Then the chief priests and the elders of the people assembled in the place of the high priest, whose name was Caiaphas, and they schemed to arrest Jesus secretly and kill him, but not during the festival, they said, or there may be a riot among the people. They are intent on Jesus' murder, not because of the evidence against him, but because of their wicked, the wickedness of their hearts. They represent all of us before God moves in our lives. Unbelief is the result of sin. It's not the result of evidence. Thirdly, Jesus is anointed in Bethany. The hatred of the religious leaders is set in contrast with with the love of Mary, we know it's Mary because of what we read in John 12, 3, who is extravagant in her devotion to Jesus. We read in Matthew 26, 6 to 7. While Jesus was in Bethany, the home of Simon the leper, a woman came to him with an alabaster jar of very expensive perfume, which she poured on his head as he was reclining at the table. This was an amazing act of faith. This perfume would have acted like insurance. It was an amazing act of faith and generosity, it it being worth one year's wages, we read about in in John 12. Fourthly, why this waste? Judas in uh, John 12, 4 puts on a facade of concern toward the poor, and all the disciples, it seems, join him in accusing this woman. We read in Matthew 28, 8 to 9, when the disciples saw this, they were indignant. Why this waste, they asked. This perfume could have been sold at a high price and the money given to the poor. Judas, on the surface of it, looks more righteous, maybe, than this wasteful woman. However, Jesus knows everyone's heart. Sacrificial worship is never a waste in Jesus' eyes and is in fact the most important thing that we can do each day. In fact, it was this Mary who had sat at Jesus' feet to learn from him and against the railing of Martha had heard Jesus correct her with these words in Luke 10, 41 to 42. Martha, Martha, The Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed, or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken from her. So this moment of anointing is simply another display of her devotion to Jesus. And fifthly, 
it's a beautiful thing. Judas and all the disciples who accuse her of being wasteful receive a lesson in worship from this event. As, Matthew, as Jesus says in Matthew 26, 10 to 12, aware of this, Jesus said to them, why are you bothering this woman? She has done a beautiful thing for me. The poor you will always have with you, but you will not always have me. When she poured this perfume on my, my body, she did it to prepare me for burial. So Jesus calls her act of generous worship a beautiful thing. She wants us to see that in this act, the vindication of Jesus, although he's about to be cursed by God as he's hung on a tree, he is without sin and is worthy of our worship. Sixthly, finally, Judas betrays Jesus. In Matthew 26, 14 to 16, then one of the twelve, the one called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priest and asked, what are you willing to give me if I deliver him over to you? So they counted out for him 30 pieces of silver. From then on, Judas watched for an opportunity to hand him over. Jesus is now betrayed for the equivalent of four months wages. Judas and the religious leaders are set in contrast with Mary, who anointed Jesus with oil at the cost of a year's wages. So in response, pour out your worship. On this Easter Wednesday, we are taught that even on the darkest days, Jesus wants us to generously pour out our worship, which is a beautiful thing and the most important thing that we do. As Jesus heads for the cross, he expresses the, import the importance of worship. He says, truly I tell you, wherever this gospel is preached, throughout the world, what she has done will also be told in memory of her. We are never to forget this beautiful act. It's our pattern of worship as we sacrificially give everything to God in light of how he gave everything for us. This is to be remembered in trying times, when people despise our worship, when it looks like Jesus is weak and being dishonoured, when our faith is being tested for whatever reason. Let's remember her beautiful act. Go against the tide. Keep trusting. Keep worshipping. God bless you.